Okay, so the K that I worked on is the Tuck and Yang K. It was written by Eve Tuck and K. Wayne Yang, pictured right here. Um, and the essay that I primarily cut cards from is called Our Words Refusing Research, and it just details the relationship between the researcher and the subject that they're researching, particularly in instances where um, the researcher is researching subaltern groups or um, what Tuck and Ying primarily talk about is uh, like indigenous people. So the thesis of the case slash when you should read it. Um, apps that talk about oppression or suffering are the best link into this K while there are some other more specific links but I think that any AF that is a narrative of pain so like a non-T AF um, where someone is talking about something that is like personal to them or any AF that really talks about oppression of a group or an individual person is misplaced in an academic space. The academic space, or in this instance, the debate space, will really eat that kind of narrative up and use it to prop up its colonial self, um, which I'll get to the warrants for that later when I explain the links. But the impact of this is the colonial state uses those tales of oppression to prop itself up and make itself stronger. The impact of that um, there is an impact card, but that's definitely not a good thing. So just to summarize, when you should read it is any app that talks about oppression or oppression of a group or an individual person or any sort of suffering. There are other more specific links that I'll explain later, but that should be the most common time that you read it. So the generic links in the shell, there are three of them. First is oppression. Second is actually the academy. I switched the order because I felt like it was uh, more important, but second is the academy, and third is research in general. Um, so all three of these cards are actually cut from the R Words Refusing Research um, essay, but the first one talks about oppression. So the way that I think about this link is that the AC gets up and they talk about oppression or they talk about pain or suffering or anything like that. They really boil down the identities of the people that they're speaking for or really themselves into a six minute, a six minute speech that really can't capture their identity. And because it is focused around pain and suffering and really talking about everything that sucks, um, it traps them or the group of people they're talking about in a matrix of suffering and oppression. That's a quote from the tag. The argument is that they're allowing a subaltern group to speak, but the only time that they can speak is when they're talking about pain. Um, the problem with this is that it creates a relationship of subjectivity, which reproduces paternalism and props up colonialism. The way that I think about this in terms of debate, which also applies to the academy link, I guess, is that the affirmative debater will get up and talk about something that's important to them and talk about their suffering or their pain, um, and the judge will vote for them to affirm that and like give them self-affirmation in that pain. That is, it really models the way that indigenous people function within the colonial state because the only way that they're able to gain recognition is through talking about their pain or their suffering or everything that's wrong which the K doesn't say that that's not valid but rather there's another approach that we should take to this so that it won't be co-opted um, the way well that's really the alternative which I'll get to later but what I mean when I say co-opted is that the judge really representative of the colonial state when they affirm that debater and when they say, yeah, when they give them recognition for their tales of pain, they're not recognizing that they're the one that inflicted that pain and the suffering on indigenous people. They feel the, the colonial state is able to affirm themselves in a sense because they're, you know, like doing something good and helping the oppressed. So 
basically how it breaks down is the way that this helps the colonial state is because there's a cry for help and because people are talking about their pain and their suffering, the colonial state is able to paint themselves as someone who's actually helping them because they're recognizing that pain. So that's one of the impacts. The second impact is just that you boil down the identities of the subaltern way too much and you just trap them in suffering and oppression and make them one dimensional where the only thing that can be recognized about them is their suffering and not anything else like culture or things like that. Um, so that's really the first link. The second link is the academy link. And basically this link just talks about why when we are talking about these things in an academic space or the debate space, the debate space is an extension of the colonial state and really like the tales of oppression that the AC outlines are commodified and used to support the, the like settler colonialist um, state. So this is really the same warrant uh, when I, as before when I talked about uh, the judge affirming the debater that talks about oppression and how the state is able to seem like they're really doing the right thing. But it goes one step further just to say that uh, the academy is really immature and not yet, it's, I think it says, it uses the exact words, not yet responsible enough to understand those stories and um, take in a, a type of action. The reason for this is research, this kind of spills over into the research link, but research and the academy, they're funded by the state or they're really extensions of the state. Um, they like curriculums and things like that. They perpetuate the ideas that the state wants us to learn and the things that we're supposed to learn and are supposed to be right. Um, so the argument is that when we, it says when we invoke the academy, we are invoking a propagation of settler colonial knowledge. The academy does not yet deserve this knowledge. The argument really just in a nutshell is that the academy is not the correct place for those tales of oppression. Um, but really the links uh, in the shell are very similar. The explanations are pretty similar. The way that I think about it the most is just the relationship between the judge and the debater and how the affirmation works. But there are like specific details in each card to the academy, to research, and to the specificities of um, narratives of oppression. So the next card is about research. Um, the AC, when they like stand up and they talk about solving for oppression or they try to bring awareness to the suffering that they're talking about. So for example, right now I'm just gonna use model minority as an example. Uh, they stand up and they say, we need to bring awareness to Asian American oppression. Um, the problem with this is that they cry for like a sort of research or further exploration into that oppression. The problem with this is that research is usually funded by the state. Um, social science and things like that are extensions of the colonial state because we have one group who is, while it may seem like on the surface level they're trying to dive in deeper and understand the suffering of a group, they're really just a, they're, they're really just creating a hierarchy between them and the group that they're researching. The problem with this is it does have a paternalism uh, impact like outlined in the first link, but the main problem with this is that the research is very patronizing and it only allows the subaltern group to gain recognition for oppression and pain. So as you can see, the links are like pretty similar, but there are specific ones. Um, if you are reading another specific link, I would probably take out one of them, but you can read through them and see which ones you find the easiest to explain. So now on just to the specific links. So the first link is personal pain and suffering. The way that I think about this one, it's very similar to the oppression link, but the card is a little more specific to 
personal um, narratives of pain and suffering. So um, something that I wrote just to like explain this is that the debate space simply consumes narratives of suffering and asks for more. Um, the way that I think about it is, again, with the judge-debater relationship, the judge only is able to affirm the debater uh, who details their oppression and kind of shows their scars, which is problematic because it does reinstate that type of hierarchy. So this link is very similar, but it is a way to show that personal pain narrative. So uh, non-TFs that talk about like specific instances where the debater was impacted or any type of narrative that affects them personally. It's a politic that names pain and portrays that pain, which locks them in a system only where they can gain recognition from a judge or from the debate community when they're portrayed as violated. So that's really, the links are very similar as you can see, but um, this one talks about the wounded body and why um, when they detail their dysfunction, abuse, and neglect, the only way that they can make their voice count is through pain. This is actually the card that has the examples. Um, so the card talks about ESL teachers who um, say that they're like representing the authentic voice of students, which while they are like researching and they while they are trying to help on the surface level, they're never really able to capture what their student is talking about. And they're never really able to represent the authentic voice. By saying that they are representing their authentic voice creates this type of hierarchy. It's like when, um, so like a, another example of this is just when any minority group will go to the government and say like, we need this to happen or this is happening to us and we need you to create a solution. Some like white old man politician will get up in front of a press conference and talk about that and say, look, like black people are oppressed or that's like very vague, but any type of problem they'll say like, look, we probably shouldn't be doing that to indigenous people or anything like that. They take the words of indigenous people and they reformulate them into something that can strategically benefit them and make them seem like they're doing the right thing. But in reality, they never really do anything to help those people. Um, another example in the card is, it talks about some white teachers who describe themselves as foot soldiers in the new ethnographic army talking about the black experience. So that should just tell you that the way that we talk about oppression, the way that the white settler colonial state is able to like affirm the oppression only through painting themselves as doing a good thing is the problem. So that's the personal pain narrative um, link. The next link is to open movements. This is actually the one that I um, hit on the free speech topic. Um, the argument is similar to the academy link, but really just that society is not deserving of the dissent the AC calls for. So any AF that talks about protests or open dissent, open movements, um, the link is that those movements are co-opted by the white world. This link I don't think is the strongest link. Uh, it seems kind of just like a generic link to any... Um, like decal, critique, or anything like that. But um, the link talks about just any time that a subaltern group wants to protest something or wants to uh, gain recognition for their oppression, that is co-opted for the same reasons that I described earlier. But when they call for researchers to um, like explore the underrepresented people, that garners the impacts that I've talked about previously, just that we paint the white colonist as someone who's doing something to help, but really they're only giving recognition to the minority groups or to the indigenous people because of their suffering. Um, a quote just at the very end of that card 
that sums it up nicely is, this is how the academy reproduces its own irrepressible irresponsibility. Really just that the academy and like open spaces for dissent are not the correct place for discussions of oppression. The next link is just to any decal app in general. Uh, I think these are pretty strong links actually. It's kind of an impact scenario. There's two of them. But the, the thing that these cards talk about is that coloniality is not a metaphor and it cannot be understood in the span of a debate round. Uh, it can't be captured within the AC using like the oppression of indigenous people as a strategic way to win a debate round re-entrenches the like impacts that are outlined in that AC. Uh, the second card really just like uh, reiterates that, but it outlines the impact scenario and really like uh, solidifies the turn. When you phrase decolonization as a metaphor, i.e. when you use it to help yourself win a debate round, because obviously like voting AF is not going to decolonize Africa or something like that, you kill the possibility of actual change and recreate the oppression that you talk about. Um, it, the second card gives an example of like Navajo print underwear sold at a clothing chain store, things like that, which I think really like models the way that people use decal apps in debate because when you use oppression to like help yourself win a debate round, which is really when you read anything at all because you wouldn't read something that's not gonna help you win. Um, you recenter whiteness and you kill the possibility of decolonization because you use it as something that's not real and something that is just like something that can help you advance to your bid round or something like that. Um, so that's really that impact kind of scenario but it does function as a pretty good link um so that's it for the links on to the alternative so the alternative that i chose is desire-based research which is what tuck and yang call for in their book but when i hit this critique at stanford i think um the alternative was like something along the lines of keeping your mouth shut and like keeping movements underground. There are also alternatives that are like do the AF without the narratives that they talk about. I felt like this one was the strongest because if something links into the, the this one really avoids the, the perm the best, I think, because if something really links into the K, if something is really oppression-y and like focused on pain, they're not going to be able to spin it as desire-based research. Um, so what does desire-based research mean? Well, the way that I think about it is instead of getting up and talking about everything that sucks, you can talk about everything that needs to happen or um, like solutions for the problem. So an example of this is just like if you go and complain to someone and say like, my life sucks, please help me, they're not going to be able to do what you want unless you tell them specifically what you want. Like, you want, I don't know, like free Netflix for two years. So the alternative is just desire-based research. The advantages to this is that it can't be co-opted. So lots of the offense from the K is that your narratives of oppression get co-opted by the white colonist. Um... A focus on desire-based research helps us look to the future and look to the ways that we can actually solve for those things. A white politician cannot co-opt a group, like a, a, a white politician cannot co-opt a group of indigenous people saying, we need you to do this for us. But they can co-opt them saying, please, like we need help. And like put them, and the, like, the white politician can structure themselves as um, superior when there are tales of oppression. The second is that it's more affirming for the subjugated. The links talk about a lot why um, like 
narratives of pain trap subaltern groups in matrixes of oppression. They boil down identity to only focus on pain and make it seem like the only facet to uh, like indigenous people or any like disadvantaged group is pain. Desire-based research is way more affirming because you can stand up and say what you want the solution to be. The next uh, advantage to this is that there's no satisfaction for the oppressor. This kind of ties in what the can't be co-opted explanation is, but really that the oppressor can't paint themselves as better. They can't show themselves as saying like, oh, we're going to solve for your pain because there's a concrete recognition of what needs to happen. There's a concrete um, like plan for action to solve for the oppression. The oppressor can't make it seem like they're doing the right thing by recognizing pain. So that's really the alternative. Um, there's one framing card which definitely should not be read. Uh, it's like framing and an impact. It should not be read against a decal af, which is kind of obvious. But it's the Razak card, and it just details the impacts of subjugation of native groups, and talks about the impacts of decal of um, like indigenous suffering. There's a genocide impact, but I think like suffering of indigenous people is impact enough. And if you're debating a like oppression EF, which is what you should be debating with this K. Um, that should be the impacts that matter most in the round. There shouldn't be any uh, issues with framing. So I do have a few add-ons, and each of the add-ons, if you have any link to a uh, decal K, would function as a really good add-on because they're not necessarily links because that would kind of be contradictory to what the thesis of the K is. But the add-ons that I found... Uh, I have a model minority add-on, anti-blackness, and then just race in general. So I'll go over each of those. First, model minority. This is also written by Tuck and Yang, but it's a different book. It's called Decolonization. Um, or no, it's called Decolonization is not a metaphor. Um, so what this card talks about is when you... Um, I'm trying to find this specific example. Right, okay. So here's a quote from the card. Some labor becomes settler while excess labor becomes enslavable, criminal, and murderable. The impossibility of fully becoming a white settler referring to an exceptionalized position is actually an investment in settler colonialism. So the way I interpreted this is like model minority usually talks about... Um, the way that the, like, Asian American is painted uh, and, like, portrayed. What the card talks about, it does say model minority a few times and why. That's a specific example of it. But in times of crisis, when we had um, what the card describes as foreign contagions, like when we had internment camps or uh, right now with anti-Mexican immigration, those exceptionalized groups and focusing on those exceptionalized groups are an investment in settler colonialism because specifically with a uh, model minority it is an exceptionalized group it is an exceptionalized um, position so the tag talks about why when you solely invest in shattering the myth of the model minority you create more and more subordinate groups um, which does help prop up the colonial state. I don't know that that's necessarily the best add-on, but the links do like work pretty well against model minority, so I don't know that you would necessarily need that. The next um, add-on is just a card that says that understanding, or for anti-blackness, is just a card that says that understanding settler colonialism is a prerequisite to understanding the black body. So just if you're debating a, like, Wilderson F or something like that, this might be good to tack on just to show that the K is a prerequisite. Um, race in general, the add-on just talks about why racism is a tool of the colonizer, and 
it furthers the idea that like the plea for help is used to support the structure's present. So when you call for help, the person that you're calling to help you is actually you, which is the problem. Um, so those are really the add-ons. I'm sure there are other ones that could be found. Really just any link to a decal K would work pretty well. So now on to the answers to the K. The first answer is, I think, the strongest. It's that reclaiming the debate space is possible, and it's really try or die. So this, I cut a few Jero cards, um, just to say that, like, as intellectuals in an academic space, we do have a duty to reclaim the debate space. It's not impossible. There's not 100%, like, co-option of everything we say. When we debate, there is an impact to the words that we say in the round. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's the strongest argument because then you can prove that the AF is a good instance of reclaiming the debate space. I don't think that we'd be hitting this K with anything that we often read um, just because like if we do detail some sort of oppression by any minority group, it would not be the whole thesis of the AF, or that would be an impact to it. That would like weaken the link a little bit, and we don't really uh, read non-TFs that talk about like suffering and pain that often. But there are other links, like the open movement one that I hit at Stanford. Um, the second answer is that academic space is the best place to kickstart movement. That is a marimba card. That's a funny name. Um, but it talks about why even if the debate space is flawed, it's the best place that we can start movements towards decolonization. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the Giroux arguments, just that it's possible to reclaim the debate space and it's possible to kickstart movements from debate. Even if like the reading of the AC is not going to decolonize Africa or anything like that, which is obviously true. There's still some impact to it, and that impact is definitely a good thing. Um, the next argument is that it's try or die for research. Again, it goes hand in hand with this. It just says that um, things are pretty bad now, and like bringing awareness to it is the best option that we have. Um, next is that narrative solved to a certain extent. So the argument is that, again, I think this is a pretty strong argument, is that even if speech is not liberatory, the act of speech and the act of challenging knowledge and challenging the colonial state is a good thing. Staying silent is definitely way, way worse. So um, the K debater will definitely try and go for, like, your research gets eaten up and you're helping the colonial state, but you really should just break down for the judge. Like, if you really think about it, bringing awareness to a problem is the best way to go as for now. If, like, we're not policymakers, we're not politicians, we're just trying to discuss issues in the debate space and talking about oppression is probably a good idea um, to bring awareness t for all people. Um, Next, there are a few cards that talk about uh, speaking for others and things like that. And this is just responsive to the claims that the K makes about boiling down identity into something that's only about pain, uh, especially because you're just one person, one debater, potentially talking for, you know, an entire uh, ethnic group or entire group of any sort. Uh, so those cards are just pretty good on that argument. They just talk about why speaking for others is inevitable, the only means for current political accountability and um, like the best way for action. Uh, there are three cards, I think. They're all a little bit different, and I think like picking one or two is really good depending on how hard the debater goes for it. But really just if you win that speaking for others is a good thing, and if you win that uh, like talking about the oppression that other people face is a good thing. You're probably winning like the majority of the links uh, uh, on the K. Um, so that's definitely a good argument to go for. 
Next is just the work on the alternative and the perms. So the alternative, like, people have cut different alternatives, and it really, like, the arguments you make against them really depend on what they are. Um, for example, if you're hitting an alternative that's like, keep your mouth shut and don't do any movement, um, that's a little bit different than responding to, like, endorsing the app as a form of desire, or uh, endorsing, like, any type of action as a form of desire-based research, or doing the app without the narratives, but the arguments that I found, if someone does not read an alternative that is endorse, like, action as desire-based research, you can read those cards and use them to justify the perm um, what I have written on the PowerPoint is perm to the AF as an instance of the alt. That is just if the alternative is like do the AF without the narrative or do like, I don't know, any type of alternative that's not keep your mouth shut or um, do desire-based research. You can read perm do the AF as a form of desire-based research without the card that justifies desire-based research. Um, if you really think that you can spin the app to be desire-based research. If you have a plan text that can like be symbolic of desire-based research because you're outlining what needs to happen. If you're whole res or there's no plan text, no course of action, just really like talking about what is wrong with life, uh, it would be difficult to spin it as desire-based research. But if they don't read an alternative that's desire-based research, you can card their like author and say, look, this is not what your author calls for. They want desire-based research. They don't want to like talk about oppression in such a sad way. They want to use it as an affirming way to create like resolutions for that oppression. Um, so that should be like pretty sufficient to win you the perm. But the other argument is that yeah, I just, I had written do the app because if they say, like, keep your mouth shut or, like, do the app without the narratives, you can say, you can make arguments as to why, like, narratives are important or just generally that Tuck and Ying wanted desire-centered research, not just us to, like, sit back and, like, sulk in the colonial state, but rather we should take action and that it's... The, the, the last argument is that it's try or die for research, which, again, it's what the AF calls, uh, it, it's what the, like, K calls for. The K, like, the authors talk about why we need desire-centered research, so sitting back and, like, not doing anything is definitely worse. Um, and that's basically it. If you have any questions about the K or answers to the K, just slack me in.